Hi, everybody, and welcome to your video for 12.6 binomial theorem. So you've already done a couple days on 12.6 um, when we did Pascal's triangle, and you just took a progress check on that. What we're going to do, though, today is get more into the mathematical equation that goes with how to figure out these binomials. Okay, and it can be quite daunting, to be honest. Like, it's quite the elaborate equation that we're going to be using today. So um, bear with me on this front side here as we kind of work our way through it. Okay, so when we define the binomial theorem, remember a binomial is anytime you have a plus b to some power of n, right? It's got to be two terms that we're adding or subtracting raised to some type of power. That's a binomial. So defining the binomial theorem says this. If n is a positive integer, then because you can't do the binomial theorem um, when you're raising something to a negative exponent. Negative exponents, remember, we become, become positive when we move them to the denominator. All right, so let's talk about how we're going to expand this. So let's say I use an x plus y to the nth, okay? All right, so the first thing we do is think, all right, I already know my first term is gonna be x to the nth. Now you could go to Pascal's triangle to figure out the coefficient for the second, but mathematically, this is how you find it. You take, um, and I just wanna, leave a blank space right here so we can show the coefficient here. I think everyone's okay that we need to lower than our power of x by one. So n minus one and y to the first power. Okay, what we're gonna put here is n over one. So if this was raised to the third power, we'd put a three in. Fourth power, we'd put a four. All right, now these next ones, they'll get a little bit crazier we need to make this a little bit bigger and i'm going to have an x to the n minus 2 y to the 2 and what number is going to go here will be n times n minus 1 we're going to take this n value and multiply it by the number just below it but we're also going to take this 1 and multiply it by 2 plus all right, let's make that spot a little bit bigger. And now we're doing x to the n minus 3, y to the third. Okay, so we're going to multiply n also by the n minus 1, but now also by an n minus 2. So we're going to multiply three numbers on top. So I need three numbers on the bottom, 1, 2, 3. Okay, plus... And we're going to keep going with that all the way out to our last term, which just like here, we know we start with x to the nth. We're going to end with a y to the nth. All right. So this gets a little crazy when, when we see it. So let's take a look at what's going on here. Our next one, 2x minus y to the sixth. We're going to use binomial theorem to help us expand this. Um, if you were go to go to the triangle, you know this is row six, but this also tells us we're going to have seven terms when we expand it. And let's think about this. My x is really 2x, and my y is really a negative y. Okay? So anytime up here where I want to put in an x, I'm really going to put in a 2x. And anytime up here I have a y, I'm going to put in a negative y. Okay, so the first thing we do is we start off with x to the nth. Well, my x is really 2x. And my n, this is my n here, is 6. Plus, we're going to leave a blank. And now we're going to go 2x to the fifth, y, well, actually negative y to the first. Okay. And the number that has to go in here is n over 1, and my n is 6 over 1. 
All right, my next term. Make it a little bit longer. Let's take care of the variables first. This time I'm going to have a 2x to the fourth and a negative y squared. Remember those powers always have to equal up to your n. So they total 6. Here I have a 6 over 1. 6 over 1. Here I take the n and then I lower it by 1 and I also increase it by 2. So I'm going to go 6 times 5 and a 1 times 2. Plus, all right, let's make it a little bit longer. 2x to the third, negative y to the third. And my term here, my coefficient will be 6, 5, 4, and a 1, 2, 3. So I'm right here. I took my n, n minus 1 is 5, n minus 2 is 4. Plus, kind of running out of room here on this one. 2x squared, negative y to the fourth. And my number here will be 6, 5, 4, 3, and a 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, so, so far we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 5 terms. We have 2 more to go. we got to get term 6 and term 7. So, plus, let me put it right here. 2x to the first, negative y to the fifth, and my coefficient out front will be 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then my last term, 2x to the 0, I don't have any, so I'm right here now. Um, and notice I don't have a number in front here, and let me show you why. Uh, there really is a number 1 here. But if I take a negative y now to the 6th, and I go 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all of these will cancel with the numbers on top. That's why we don't have to show it there on this last one. Oops, sorry. Kind of covering that up there. All right. Looks kind of ridiculous, right? So now that was the first attempt at kind of simplifying our equation. And then the second step then is to clean it up. So here's my first term, okay? So I need to grab my calculator. Let's see if I can help here. But I don't just make this 2x to the 6. That is in parentheses there, so you need to raise 2 to the 6th. So 2 raised to the 6th is 64. So that first term is 64x to the 6th. Plus, all right, when I look here, I have 6, a 2 to the 5th I need to take, and a ne there's really an invisible negative 1 there, negative 1 to the 1st. So I am multiplying 6 times 2 to the 5th times a negative 1, which gets me, I shouldn't have wrote plus there, and minus 192 x to the 5th, y to the 1st. Okay, now before I go on, I might want to come up here and kind of clean this up a little bit. 6 times 5 is 30, 30 divided by 2 is 15. So when I want to figure out my next term, I have to go 15 times 2 to the 4th times my negative 1 squared. So 15 times 2 to the 4th times a negative 1 squared gets me a positive 240 x to the 4th y squared. Okay, now let's take a look at this one. When I go to clean this up, I like to do a lot of it in my head. So I think here, you could multiply across and divide by 6 here. I think 2 times 3 is 6, so that'll cancel. So I really have 20 here is what that simplifies to. So now on my calculator, I'm going to take 20 times 2 to the 3rd, which is 8, times a negative 1 to the 3rd, which is negative 1. So I'm going to end up having a negative here. So 20 times my 8 
So a negative 160 x to the third, y to the third. Okay, now we get to this one right here. When I want to figure out what this is, definitely I have some canceling. I can do 2 times 3 is 6. 4 cancels. So 5 times 3 is 15 is what that becomes. So I'm going to have to multiply 15 times 2 to the second, or 4, and negative 1 to the fourth will become positive. So it's 15 times 4. I can't believe I just put that in my calculator. 60 x squared y to the fourth. All right, now we look at this number here. 2 and 3 will cancel there. 4 cancels. The 5 cancels. I'm left with 6. So 6 times 2 is 12. Negative 1 to the fifth will become negative. So it's negative 12 x to the first, y to the fifth. And then finally, if you look at this number here, all of it cancels. So we're left with one. And negative one to the sixth is going to be a positive one. So positive y to the sixth. Now I'm sure you noticed that these numbers here like this number, there's a 1 in front of here, a 6, a 15, 20, 15, 6, and a 1. Those are all the same numbers you guys did yesterday with Pascal's triangle. So this binomial theorem is just a more mathematical way of coming up with what those numbers should be if you don't have Pascal's triangle right next to you. Okay. Now, typically, I just use Pascal's triangle every time. I do what we did with Pascal's and um, put those numbers in front of there and just do my simplifying. When it comes in handy is what we're going to have on the back side. So flip your notes over. And you'll notice here all the instructions on the back say to find a particular term. Find the fifth term of this. Find the fourth term. So we're not having to find all the terms and expand all of it, but just to look for one particular term in there. So we're going to use a, an equivalent form of binomial theorem. Um, it looks like this. If you have x plus y to the nth, that is the same thing as saying we're going to sum up from term 0 to the nth. We can't start with 1 because remember there's always one more term. If this is n, you will have n plus 1 terms. So they get by with that by keeping this as n and making that a 0. All right, n factorial over r factorial, n minus r factorial, times x to the n minus r, y to the r. Okay, now you probably haven't done factorials. Uh, in a while, if at all. Um, what a factorial is this? If I asked you for 6 factorial, 6 factorial just means multiply 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That's 6 factorial. So when we were doing the binomial theorem on the front, we were writing out the, the factorials. Okay, And um, I will show you where to find that on your calculator. But this part of this equation right here is what I want you to really focus on. That is the formula you're going to use to find a specific term value. So used to find a specific term value. Okay. So let's try one and see what I all mean by that. Um, actually, let's kind of, I, I don't feel like I talked about this right here enough. That zero there is, is really, so it's our first term is actually going to be the zeroth term. So our first term then is going to be when the R is zero. Okay. And so the second term is when r is 1. And the third term is when r is 2. 
So what you're going to see is whenever we want to figure out what R is, which we need R in this equation. So R is equal to the term number minus 1. Okay, so that's going to be an important piece that we use here. Okay, so to find the fifth term of 4a plus 3b to the seventh, okay, when it says find the fifth term, nowhere up here does it say what term number you are, but it has r, okay? So r is going to be that term number, 5 minus 1, so my r in the equation is going to be 4. What do you think the n is in our equation? That's our n right there. So n is 7. Okay. Okay, so now using this equation, n factorial. So we have 7 factorial over, and I tend to put, I want you always to put your denominator in parentheses, r factorial. So r is 4 times n minus r. So you can either go 7 minus 4 factorial or do, do it in your head and get 3. times, what's my x? Look at this equation, what is my x? My x is right there, so times 4a to the n minus r, 7 minus 4, that's n minus r, times y, there's my y, 3b, to the r power, which is 4. Okay, it's just a matter of cleaning this up now. All right, so when you guys are looking for um, where the factorial button is on your calculator, so maybe we should write this down. Um, the factorial button, which is, the ex it looks like an exclamation point. You hit math. Scoot over to probability, and it's the fourth one down. Okay, so here's how you do this. If I want 7 factorial, I take 7, and then I go math, scoot over to probability, factorial, divided by, do a parenthesis, 4 math, probability, and then you can do this in your head or type it like that, but I just do 7 minus 4 is 3. Math, scoot over to probability. And then close the parentheses. The biggest mistake kids make is not having that whole number or that whole denominator in parentheses. When I hit enter, I get 35. So 35 times 4a to the third, 3b to the fourth. Okay, I have to clean this up. So I need 35 times 4 to the 3rd times 3 raised to the 4th is 181,440. And don't forget this, A to the 3rd, B to the 4th. Okay, find the fourth term of this one. So fourth term, first thing I do is I want to figure out what my r is. So my r is the term number minus 1. So my r is 3. My n equals 6. There's my x and there's my y. And now we just put it into the equation. So look up at the top of your paper. n factorial over r factorial, my r is a 3, and n minus r factorial times my x, which is 5a, to the n minus r, 6 minus 3, times y, which is 2b, 
to the R, which is the third. I always want you to show me what you're getting here. So everybody put that into your calculator and let's see what you're getting. But again, you go six, math, scoot over to probability, divided by three factorial. And then six minus three is another three factorial. So I have 20. So that is 20 times 5a to the third, 2b to the third. So 20 times 5 to the third times 2 to the third equals 20,000. So 20,000 a to the third, b to the third. All right, I really do want to practice one more here. Find the sixth term of this one. So finding the sixth term, that means r is six minus one or five. Your n is seven. Your x is an a and your y is a negative b. So pause the video and make sure you get the same answer that I do. All right, I have n factorial over r factorial, and n minus r, seven minus five is two, times my x to the n minus r, and my negative b to the r. All right, when I do seven factorial divided by two factorial and five factorial, I get 21. So I have 21 a squared times negative b to the fifth, and this negative one to the fifth is gonna become negative. 21 times negative one will be a negative 21 a squared b to the fifth. Oh my gosh, sorry. Couldn't even see that. Okay, so that is the binomial theorem. We're gonna use this um, for a couple days here and do some story problems with these. But definitely email if you have any questions on this.